Hello and welcome back to another video and today as you can see we're back with another episode of the 9 season 2009 mode here on MotoGP 22. Now if you haven't seen the previous episode which came out a couple of days ago I do recommend you go watch that one first because this series kind of tells the story of the 2009 season so it just makes a lot more sense if you have seen all the previous episodes but if you don't want to obviously it's fair enough you can still just watch this one. But here we are then for round 8 of the season now at Laguna Seca the 5th of July 2009. The four MotoGP races held at Laguna Seca have seen Nicky Hayden win twice and Casey Stoner and Valentino Rossi once each. The Spanish riders are missing. This could be the one. Now I have actually heard that the AI could be pretty strong here, like pretty overpowered, a bit like in Vigello, so we may have to give it a try and then turn the AI difficulty down. Hopefully not, but I've heard that they can be a little bit OP here. But let's head into the challenge, let's see who we are, and let's see what we've got to do. Tight, twisty, Difficult. Laguna Seca hasn't been kind to Jorge Lorenzo. He crashed out on the first lap in 2008, his first race here. This year he's on pole, but he can barely walk after qualifying. Qualifying was almost over. Lorenzo was fastest, but he wanted more. He needed a clear track. He slowed down to let the riders ahead of him go. In those moments, his tires cooled slightly as the heat in the rubber decreased. So did the grip. It was the same story at a different corner for Casey Stoner. I got held up on, on my lap similar to, to Jorge and uh, my tyres weren't heated up enough. Basically as I went into that corner it was a, a long entry so I thought you know I had a plenty of feeling all the way into the middle of the corner. I hadn't even got on the gas yet and the back came round and uh, that was it game over. Of the fastest four, Rossi's the only one who's feeling fine. Danny Pedrosa comes to California from a rough weekend in Holland. Last year, he missed the race here through injury, and he's riding injured again today. Tough times. But like they say, when the going gets tough. Rossi's coming. He's faster than you. He's gonna catch you, but you're in front. Can you stay there? So then here we are, we're playing as Danny Pedrosa as I predicted, and it seems like we have to keep Rossi behind us by at least 0.5 of a second. So it should be at least achievable, even if they are OP. I mean, I don't know whether I can get the 0.5! Oh, that was, uh... Well, I've picked up a child this warning now. <laughs> okay. I can't really blame the AI on that one. I can only really blame my own poor ability. Uh, so, let's try that again, and uh, see if we can actually make it through more than one corner. So I'll try not to crash immediately this time, and now something I actually have noticed is that we're going to have to watch the fuel, which is why I've put it down into Pamo 2, because we're actually going to complete the whole race. So it's a bit like one of the other ones before from uh, Le Mans, where you actually have to watch the fuel. Made a big mistake at the corkscrew, but I didn't crash, so I'm going to carry on going. But the tyres are really worn, so that doesn't help, the bike doesn't feel very good. I feel like the Yamaha is definitely the best like bike in this uh, in this mode. So the Yamaha is the best and the Ducati is kind of bad and I remember the Honda being quite poor when I played with it at Mategi before. So we've got worn tyres, we've got to keep a fast AI behind us and try not to make any mistakes at a track that's quite tricky and not one that you get a lot of practice at because obviously it doesn't come from career mode, it doesn't really get picked online very much so you don't really get to play Laguna very often. So we'll have to see how it pans out. Rossi's already within a second, I think he was like over two seconds behind at the start so we've lost a lot of time. I know I made a big mistake at the court screw, but even still, he's uh, he's gaining on us at a hell of a rate. Yeah, he's within half, within half a second now. That thing's gone away. So I feel like Rossi's going to pass us quite easily here. Talk towards the court screw again. He's going to break a lot earlier than you think you do. It's a very tricky corner. I can hear Rossi's right there. He's looking for it. We're going through the court screw. Here's Rossi. He, well, he's passed me. So we've already lost a position. Literally the first quarter he passed me. So I think uh, what I heard about them being OP may be correct. I'll tell you what, we can maybe close up on him. Here we go, into the last corner. I'm not getting this one stopped, am I? No, I'm not. It was worth a try, I guess. But maybe I can get him into turn one if he's a bit of Palmo three. I think now that I'm behind him, I might be able to sort of follow him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was, uh, not good. <laughs> That was that that was so strange. I mean, I guess it's because I uh, the, the front wheel sort of got a bit light over the crest and just absolutely sent me off. So I think once again we are going to have to uh, reattempt this challenge. But I think it is possible on this difficulty uh, because there's only like sort of a couple of laps to go. I think maybe if we can sort of have a bit of a battle with him, we can stop him pulling away. 
So obviously I've got to keep an eye on a lot of things. I've got to watch the fuel at this uh, this circuit because you've got to finish the race. I need to actually make sure I don't run out of fuel. Whereas usually in the other challenges you only have to do a couple laps and you've got like 30 laps of fuel on board so you can use Padma 3 the whole time. I've also got to make sure I don't make mistakes because it's such a tricky track and then I've just got to make sure Rossi doesn't get past me. I've made it a bit more difficult for him by not completely blowing the court screw on this attempt. So maybe, maybe I can do it. So, so far, I've kept him about two seconds. I don't feel like I rode a lot better, but you can see the lap time was uh, a hell of a lot better. I think I had a 24 on the previous attempt, so it was uh, much better then. So he's still two seconds behind, two laps to go. We could actually do this. So he's brought the gap down to 1.4 seconds. Actually, he wasn't doing too bad till about the corkscrew section. That seems to be the second half of the lap where they, they gain all the lap time. Seems like in the first half of the lap, you can match them quite easily. I'll tell you what, I've been properly on the limit. I think we're just going to manage this 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a second. So we're actually going to beat both the objectives here. But I'll tell you what, I was pushing on that last lap. I think Rossi did at like a 20.9 on that last lap. I was consistently in the 21s, but damn, they are fast. So yes, I think they are going to be OP. It does really depend on what the next challenge is going to be. At least this one was possible. But if I have to catch and pass in the next one... It's just not going to happen because they they are a lot faster. Don't you know? Don't get it wrong. They are a lot quicker than me. I've just managed to sort of keep the gap because he was over two seconds behind and it was under a second by the end. But I did a lot better than the first attempt where he literally passed me on the second lap. But I do wonder who we've got to play as in the next challenge. So let's head into it. Let's find out and hopefully it's another one where I just have to stay in front because I don't think I'm going to be able to catch them up. A dislocated collarbone, a fractured foot. A terrible start. Don't you love Laguna? The tightest, twistiest track of them all. Nowhere to rest, even for a second. No let up from the pain. It's a good thing you love a challenge. Here's the toughest one of the year. Fight your way from sixth to third. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I was hoping that it would be one where I wouldn't have to pass many people, but... Damn, this is going to be uh, tricky. I mean, I was actually gaining on them quite a bit there, so it might be the trope where they are a little slower in the second part of the challenge. I'm not sure. Also, I'm on the Yamaha now, so the, the, the bike automatically just feels so, so much better. I also should be able to use Palmo 3 a little bit more easily as well, because I've not actually got to get to the end of the race. So, oh, okay. And again, the wheelie over the crest is absolutely destroying me. Well, that bike is absolutely gone. It's still not stopped. I guess I've got to do that one again, because I'm certainly not catching up eight seconds to Casey Stoner, but that crest, so deadly. So who have we actually got to get in this time? So we've got to get Stoner, Elias, Hayden, and I think that's it. Uh, I've completely messed up. Well, you know what? I kind of got away with that. We live to tell the tale of that one, so uh, we'll keep going. But yeah, I don't actually have to pass Rossi, so that's good. So I only have to pass the three ahead of me, which is still going to be a lot easier said than done. I mean, especially if I'm riding like that, because I've just lost a load of time to Stoner in front of me. You have no idea how hard I'm pushing to the limit. You can see I'm done at 20.8. So I was talking about how Rossi did that in the previous challenge and how it was ridiculous. Seems like you can do it on the Yamaha, but I'll tell you what, I was pushing hard. So we've managed to actually sort of bridge that gap back towards Stoner and Elias in front, but it's going to be difficult. We're only going to have two laps to pass both of these and then catch that gap up to Hayden and pass him as well. I've also failed the second part of the challenge because I should have already been in front of Stoner at this point, but if I hadn't made that mistake earlier on, I probably would be. So here we are then, down towards the Andretti hairpin, almost lost the front there on the brakes, but out the inside of Stoner, just punted Stoner out of the way, apologies for that Casey. We're up into fifth place now, so next is Tony Elias, can we get him? Just hope that Stoner doesn't come back up the inside, he hasn't, so we've kept in front of Stoner for now. Unfortunately, we didn't pass Stoner quick enough. Well, that was bizarre, I want to have a look at that actually, to be honest, I'm not going to use the rewind, I'm just going to probably restart, but... Did I get on the gravel first, or did I just start having a moment? So I was on the curb, as you do, and then, yeah, the, the suspension just started behaving really weird, sort of jumping me up and down. Then I did, like, sort of hop over the gravel, but the bike was already loud out of control at that point. And then I was in my front wheels on the gravel, so that's why I've, I think that's why I've ended up crashing, because the wheels got on the gravel. So poor Lorenzo, two days in a row, took a big tumble there, then we'll have to redo this part of the challenge. Hopefully we'll be able to pass stone a bit quicker. It probably will be a bit easier, because the gaps won't be quite as big, and I should hopefully be straight on the pace. I will give Milestone credit where it's due, that they've actually managed to make this uh, whole mode quite difficult, which is something that can't be said about most of the AI uh, events. They're usually a bit too easy, especially in previous games. The historic events have always been, well, as, especially in Mode 19, they're all way too easy. So AI will go around 20%, no matter what... Uh, 
difficulty you use normally. You couldn't change it. They, just to get the higher objectives, you just had to win by like 30 seconds. It was something ridiculous. But they managed to make this mode quite difficult. But they do vary a lot track to track, which is just, well, it's a typical Master on AI, I guess. I do apologise for not talking as much in this video as normal. I am just trying so hard to actually do this challenge because the AI, honestly, are so fast. You can see I've just got on the tarmac there, making a trying to push. I need to pass Stoner in these next few corners to get that second objective. To be honest, I'd rather get it now than have to go back and get it later on. He's all over the back of Elias. Hayden is getting away, but I think I actually might want to pass Stoner into the last corner if I can just line it up. Here we go, here we go. Down towards the last corner on the inside of Casey Stoner. I'm going to go for it. Bit risky on the curb. Gonna force him out the way. No, we're not gonna quite get him to the line, I don't think. Or maybe we can. No, it's got a bit of a wheel. He's unfortunately failed that second part of the challenge. That is so difficult to actually have to pass him that quickly. Around the outside at the first corner. Oh, Stoner. He absolutely crawled there. It's probably while I'm going to space, I'm probably going through that corner way quicker than them, but you kinda of have to. I just did a 20.5 on that lap, by the way, so. Yeah, uh, I really am pushing on. So on this occasion, I've actually got kind of lucky, because Stunner just made a bit of a mistake at the corkscrew, which has kind of detached him from Elias and brought him right onto the front of me. So I should actually be able to pass him within the time required now, which is always an improvement. But I still don't know what he was doing. I'm probably going to get an exact repeat of what happened previously, how slow he was going through this turn one. Completely caught me off guard, just hit him up the back. Here we go, straight around the outside of him. The AI just absolutely crawls that turn. He's going to dive bomb me though, he's bashed me back out the way to be fair. I had a bit of contact with him, then he gave me a bit back. Which is fine, but we're losing time to Elias and Hayden in front, which is uh, not ideal at all. So here we are through turn four, sliding that rear tyre. We should get the run down towards turn five to move. Rossi pulled a couple of times in 2008 up the inside. But now, unfortunately, I went wide. So we are costing each other a lot of time here trying to make the pass, but Stoner is a bit slow. All right, it might be a move into the court screw here, because we are gaining on Stoner a lot. Again, another Rossi move from 2008. The inside, but are we going to keep it on the circuit? Yes, we have, in fact. And we've actually got the move done. So, right, up next is Elias, then. Then it's Hayden. Just got to keep Stoner behind for the rest of this lap, and then we should have hopefully got that part of the challenge. Although, I think if he re takes me at any point, I probably will fail. 20.9 for Pedrosa. What's this going to be? A 20.8, even with all that battling. That's actually unreal. I would love to have known what that lap would have been without all that squabbling. It would have been a low 20, I would have thought. I think the Palmo 3 is helping compared to the Pedrosa lap, but even still, I think I'm just riding a lot better. And the Yamaha is so much better than the Honda. And of course the tyres help. I've got like fresh tyres now, whereas I had completely worn ones on the previous part of the challenge. So here we are then on the back of Tony Elias. So we've got to try and pass him as soon as possible so that we can get on the back of Nicky Hayden and pass him. We're going to do something similar to Stoner. We've got on the tarmac a little bit there. So good job we didn't get a trial of warning, which apparently you can get, because I did get one on one of the attempts for cutting the court screw. So there we are then on the back of Elias, trying to get the cut back on him, not quite. There we go then, look at the speed we're carrying, we're all over the back of Tony now. It really is like what we did to Stoner on the previous uh, attempt. We tried to pass him, here we go at the inside into the last turn on Tony Elias, he's going to lean on me a bit. I forced my way through, the lap is now slower than the previous one, even... Though I wasn't battling at all until that last corner. But we're up to fourth then. Next is Nicky Hayden. And he's within range. I took the front on the way into that turn one once again. It's unbelievable how uh, how much I'm kind of pushing this bike. It's, it's actually very fun though. I'm actually quite enjoying it. Because you don't usually have to push to this absolute limit on this game. And it's quite hard to do as well. Because the game is quite inconsistent. From here, that special livery of Hayden just reminds me a lot of the Fortuna, like Honda, like Melanju, like Elias were on the couple of years before this. Now that I'm up close, you can see it's the American sort of flag Ducati, but from a distance it kind of reminded me of that. But we are on the back of Hayden now, and we've got another lap as well to try and pass him, so that is really nice. Are we going to need it though? Down towards the final turn at the inside we go of Nicky Hayden. Have I done it? I think I have. We're two tenths underneath the previous lap as well. No, but here he comes. Oh, we've had a bit of contact, so he couldn't quite get back in front there. But fast up of the race then, 20.7. Actually, no, Rossi just did a 20.6. So Rossi is even quicker than us. We're up to third place. I'm very surprised, to be honest, that we've managed to do that. Because after that previous challenge, at the rate they were catching me, I don't think it'd be even possible for me to overtake any of these. Oh, here comes Hayden. Hayden's re attacked me at turn five. We've actually just keep in front of him. But this could be interesting because they're very good at changing direction in the corkscrew, so he might be able to pass me there. 
we're massively down on the time. There's seven temps. Now that I'm not following them, it seems to be a lot harder to find the, the lines in the lap time again. Here we are then down towards the final turn. Are we going to do it through the last quarters? Don't make a mistake here. There we go. All towards the line. We're actually going to do the challenge here. We're going to finish third place half a second in front of Hayden as well. I can't believe we actually managed to do that one. Well, I'll tell you what, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I don't know how good of a video it will have made because I was sweating so much so I wasn't speaking a lot. But I'll tell you what, I enjoyed having to push to the absolute limits. It is a really nice track as well, Laguna, but it's just so difficult. It's so tight. Again, there's, there's no runoff anywhere really except at like turn six. So I was kind of pushing a bit more into there because I knew there was a bit of tarmac if I did make a mistake. But there's just gravel everywhere. You've just got to push. The AI were very, very fast as well. I mean, I was like power mode three, pushing, pushing, pushing. I was like qualifying lap every lap. And the two in front, Pedroso Rossi, were still quicker than that by a couple of attempts. So, yeah, just uh, I, that was enjoyable. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one as well. Hopefully it did turn out to be a good video and uh, something entertaining to watch. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.